In the previous video, we learned how to recover replicated virtual machines. Since replication causes a lot of network and data traffic, it's always good to look at ways to optimize replication. We can optimize replication with Network IO Control version 3. This is uh, available in the VMware uh, distributed virtual switch. We can use traffic filtering and marking capabilities as well as manipulating VM kernel adapters to separate management traffic from data traffic. So we are back again into our VCA web client. We are looking at the distributed switch that is uh, part of uh, the vCenter server to uh, 20. And uh, the reason I want to show you this is because we're going to look at first of the three ways in which one can optimize uh, traffic for replication as well as for data protection. So the first way to do it is to use the network IO control version 3 capabilities that are available with the distributed switch uh, version uh, 6. This topic has been uh, covered in the section that deals with vSphere virtual networking. But since we are talking very specifically about a very specific usage of that, it's a good time to review that to be sure we understand how it would apply for replication traffic and for data protection traffic. So I click on the distributed uh, switch, click on manage, and I look at resource allocation. Now this is where there are two things one can look at, system traffic as well as network resource pools. We've covered network resource pools before, so we're going to look only at system traffic. Now when I click on uh, system traffic, you will see that the traffic types here are all system traffic. They range from vSphere replication traffic and data protection traffic, which we are, we are going to get to in just a minute. Uh, and then, of course, all the other system traffic of vMotion, iSCSI, vSAN, the virtual machines, the NFS, uh, the management tra traffic, of course, and then for tolerance if that is uh, in place. Now, my distributed switch has uh, network I.O. control enabled, so that has to be enabled at the uh, switch level. Uh, as you can see, it's version 3, so it works differently from prior versions. I have a physical network adapter with a, a speed of 1,000 megabits. That's 1 gigabit per second which means that the total throughput available through that uh, VM NIC is uh, 1000 megabits uh, per second. Now the rules of the game with network IO, IO control is that out of the total bandwidth capacity of 1 gigabit per second, I am allowed to configure reservations of 75% of that, which is basically 750 megabits per second. What has been done is that I have configured reservations of reservations already have been configured of 750 megabits per second. And you can see that by adding this up. So it's 500 and 250 is 750 megabits per second. So it leaves the available bandwidth for other kinds of activities of 250 megabits per second. So system traffic, data protection, and vSphere replication traffic are both uh, system uh, traffic types. So what is uh, possible to do here is to uh, actually define what the share values and the reservations are for these. So by clicking on say vSphere replication traffic type pencil comes up and I click on the pencil and there I can define the shares, I can define the reservations and I can define the limits uh, for vSphere replication traffic. So this allows me in a very granular and meaningful way to uh, specify the minimum, which would be in our case the reservation for vSphere replication traffics. And then in cases of congestion, we're leaving it as a normal traffic. It's possible you might want to actually up it to uh, something uh, else than uh, normal. Uh, probably uh, a custom would be good because the amount of replication uh, traffic uh, depends on your recovery point objective, but it also depends on the uh, amount of changes in the VMDK for the virtual machines. So a lot of uh, tuning uh, possibilities exist here. So a lot of monitoring and uh, some amount of tuning once your system is operational are uh, necessary to make this work well. Otherwise, everything goes by default and that's you know, a default generally works, but doesn't work very well most of the time. Of course, you can set a limit as well. As you can see, the maximum limit is one gigabit, which is the, the full bandwidth of that network uh, adapter, that VM NIC. 
but of course you can set it to uh, uh, anything in uh, between as well i have set it to 200 i'm going to cancel it in the same way uh, we can look at the data protection backup traffic and we can also basically limit it and uh, police it so we have the reservation set to 300 and a limit of 300 so basically up to 300 are reserved for it uh, no more no less for our data protection backup now this is obviously at the entire uh, d switch level for this kind of uh, uh, traffic and this gives us one way in which uh, network IO control is actually used to make sure that the right amount of bandwidth is actually available for key types of system uh, traffic uh, especially in times of congestion we now switch gears to looking at yet another way of optimizing data protection and replication traffic and that is uh, traffic filtering and marking the uh, shares value on the reservations obviously apply to the uh, vswitch itself the uh, uh, distributed uh, uh, switch itself but once this traffic goes out into the physical uh, network if it is not marked correctly which means every uh, ethernet frame on the ethernet lan or uh, every ip packet on the wide area network is not marked correctly then defaults automatically kick in and usually defaults are that all traffic is classified and lumped together into a, a best effort uh, traffic and all the tuning you did at the virtual switch level goes by the wayside because all traffic is then treated in exactly the same way so to, to manage that here is a a distributed port group uh, called it data protection it can be any name that we are going to take a look at its uh, settings and we're going to look at the traffic filtering and marking settings in a previous uh, section of this course we have covered traffic filtering and marking extensively but just as a review there are two types of markings that are necessary because when traffic comes out of the virtual switch out of the virtual environment out of the ESXi server it goes into a physical switch and is usually an ethernet packet on the LAN for quite some time that packet can be marked with a classification called class of service which is basically a tag that uh, specifies how important or not important that packet is there is an, another marking called the DSCP marking uh, differentiated services code point marking which has also been covered extensively in a prior section of this course which is really meant for the wide area network so when the IP packet starts to be routed the IP packet also is marked with some kind of a marking that tells the routers the uh, level of importance uh, of that IP packet so there are two types of markings that are needed out in the physical network one is for the LAN and one is for the wide area network one is for the Ethernet frames and the other is for the IP packets so there are two previous examples that have been set up here and as, as you can see uh, the action for the first rule of traffic is to set it at class of service 4 and a DSCP of 4 it's usually in the range of uh, 42 44 45 46 but this is just for illustration purposes uh, only so let's click on the plus sign and see whether we can add a new traffic rule 3 so what we're going to do is we're going to update the class of service tag to say 5 and the DSCP uh, tag to uh, maybe 46 the class of service tag is for the Ethernet frame and is uh, valid on the LAN the uh, DSCP tag is uh, on the IP packet and is uh, valid on the wide area network now these settings should be done only in conjunction with the networking organization because while Cisco and other vendors networking vendors have uh, different uh, standard rules for these they have become standardized in many ways across vendors but it's good to make sure that those standards or some local standards are being followed in your organization and the best people to actually explain to you what the tagging should be for class of service and for the differentiated services code point out in their network are the networking people so please contact the networking organization before tagging this now what is it that we are going to tag well we are going to look at system qualifiers okay so if the system traffic type is or is not so we just say is if it's vSphere replication 
Okay, I don't worry about the source port and so on. So really all we are saying right now is that if there is system traffic that is vSphere replication traffic, mark the class of service tag as 5 and the update the DSCP tag to 46. And this takes care of this data, replication data as it traverses the local area network and the wide area network. You can see how important this is because you don't want it immediately after leaving your ESXi host to be dumped into a common uh, bucket with all the rest of the traffic, some important and some not so important. Especially if you have a separate backup network, a separate replication network serviced by independent physical NICs or VM NICs, that is obviously the best thing to do. Even in that case, if you expect no other traffic to traverse that network, it's always good to be consistent and mark the traffic appropriately. There is yet another way that needs to be uh, looked at. Because the replication appliance and the data protection appliance are virtual machines, we have the ability to add multiple VNICs. By adding multiple VNICs, it gives us the ability to separate out the various types of traffic. We can separate out the management traffic from the replication traffic. And in fact, uh, the appliances allow you that uh, capability uh, where you can, uh, for example, on the uh, replication appliance, you can go in there, add a, a virtual NIC, and uh, when you go to configure it, you can define uh, that new NIC at a new IP address uh, to basically be the NIC to be used for in uh, for incoming replication traffic, while the original NIC that was the VNIC zero for that uh, virtual machine would still be used for management purposes. So you would separate out the management traffic uh, from uh, the replication traffic. Uh, always a good idea. So uh, that is obviously uh, done by, for example, in, in a distributed virtual switch. You add and uh, manage hosts. You manage host uh, networking. You need to add a new VM kernel. I'm going to take this host, verify that's the host. I'm going to only manage VM kernel adapters. And I'm going to add a new adapter. I'm going to select an existing uh, port group for example, my data protection uh, port group, and I'm going to click uh, OK on that. Click Next. And this is where we have the ability to specify that this VM kernel can is going to be used only for certain purposes. So let's look at this. Uh, vSphere replication uh, traffic and vSphere, uh, so that would be basically your uh, management traffic, and then you have the replication uh, traffic is your uh, network file copy where the actual replication traffic uh, goes through. So management traffic for application and then the actual replication traffic for the virtual machines. So you can uh, create a, a VM kernel adapter that's uh, specifically for uh, NFC uh, traffic. And uh, then you can assign it a an address, an IPv4 address in this case. And, and what that uh, allows us to uh, do is to actually then have on the uh, virtual appliance, on the replication appliance, replication virtual appliance, we have then the ability to create a new virtual NIC and then uh, assign that NIC an uh, address that is in the same uh, subnet or network as this uh, VM kernel. And when that is the case, the, the kernel, uh, ESXi kernel basically uh, uses that VM kernel to uh, connect uh, with the uh, incoming traffic assigned uh, virtual NIC that is on that replication appliance. So not a difficult uh, thing to do, it's uh, documented quite well in the uh, vSphere replication documentation uh, center. They have sections on isolating the uh, network traffic. Uh, basically, you dedicate a VM kernel NIC on each ESXi host in the primary site that is sending data to the replication uh, server. And uh, you are then uh, able to distinguish between the various types of management traffic. Three types of traffic in a vSphere replication appliance, which has one VM network adapter, basically is um, traffic which is between the management server and the replication server replication traffic from the host to the replication server and then traffic between the vCenter server and the, v and the vSphere replication management server and uh, the recommendation is to add network adapters to the vSphere replication appliance and then use the WAMI uh, interface to configure a separate IP address to use for each traffic type so basically add more virtual links to the appliance and then uh, make sure it's in the in the same uh, network as the VM kernels uh, that you have created for specific service types like we have done here 
which is vSphere replication in a C traffic, and probably in this case, vSphere replication traffic would probably be uh, okay as well. So, three ways in which uh, the uh, actual traffic for uh, protection and replication can be uh, optimized. One is uh, network IO control version 3. The other one is uh, network uh, filtering and marking with the uh, class of service and uh, differentiated services code point uh, markings. And then uh, with this, uh, for replication, one can define VM kernel adapters that would uh, carry that kind of traffic and then uh, add more virtual links to your replication virtual machines to be able to uh, be on the same network and connect with these kernel adapters so that the traffic can be routed uh, directly to those additional uh, VNICs. In the next video, we will look at vSphere data protection appliance installation and configuration. I look forward to seeing you there.